Well, that lasted a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I thought we were going to have a couple of people come in and go, and everybody's sitting down by the second cool. verse. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. All right. You're ready. Please join me in the call to confession. It's printed in the bulletin. <laughs> Let us face this day with palms and honest of palms with honesty, confessing our sin before God. Holy God, sure of your faithfulness, even in your dying, comforted by your compassion toward your people in every age, we beg your mercy for our imperfect gratitude. We have looked to you for paltry favors when you have given everything. We have withheld from your people, our neighbors, and from your creation, our earth, the care and tending they deserve. We have rejected the cornerstone you sent to build a people of righteousness, even here today. Forgive our failings. Heal what we have broken. Nurture what we have neglected and lead us to your vision, so that we may know the peace of wholeness in you. In Jesus' name. Your God has come to you, humble, in the form of a servant, to free you from the weight of sin and death. Jesus' obedient suffering has released you, your spirit, Sins are forgiven in the name of the one who is exalted beyond what we can comprehend, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our scripture today comes from Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of, Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter th through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that, I have answered, that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Thank you. And from Matthew comes the story we just enacted. First 11 verses, hear this word from God. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place what, to, to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, 
humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them, and a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, and the crowds went ahead of him, and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Drew, are you coming up? Don't give me that look. That's the same look that you were giving the Easter Bunny yesterday, and I know that because I know her personally. She called me up and said, you need to talk to this kid. <laughs> Am I right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you get one of these? Why'd you get one of these? Anybody remember? You didn't get one, did you? Here. Did you? Take these. There you go. Today is what we call Palm Sunday. These are palms. Because when Jesus went into the city, he was kind of like a rock star. And everybody wanted to see him. And so they were waving these. Kind of like, you know, when you do this at the concert, right? They grabbed whatever they had. They put their cloaks down on the ground and on his donkey so that it would have a nice walk. And they were really excited to see him. If you were going to go see what rock star, you'd be excited. Ariana Grande, good, yeah. How about you? No rock star. How about football player or a football team? The Steelers. How about you? The Patriots. Really? Okay. <laughs> So if Tom Brady were somewhere where you could get his autograph, wouldn't you be pretty excited? Yeah. You, if Big Ben were somewhere, you'd want to see him, right? Yeah, same kind of idea, right? So people are real excited to see Jesus, and they did this. And we need to remember that. Because, first of all, we don't very often get that excited about Jesus, do we? But Jesus was really exciting for people to see, and he's really exciting for us to be around, so we need to remember that. Um, and this is the beginning of what we call Holy Week, because at the end of the week, we're going to have Good Friday when we remember that Jesus was crucified. Okay? So we remember all of that this week. It's a good week. God, we hope that we can see Jesus and be excited this week, knowing that he is the one who saves us. And the one who is important in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. <coughs> Amen. Hey. Hi, are you coming too? <laughs> or did you just break free from your family? Thank you. What do you have? May I have that? No? Okay.
Thank you, Carr. I'm wondering if any of you have noticed in the news lately um, that our world is full of protest. It occurred to me just recently that we have people protesting protesters who are protesting protesters. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty good. <laughs> so we know what a protest march looks like, really, because we've seen plenty of them just recently. And it gets lost on us when we read the Psalms, or, or the, the story about the palms, excuse me, that what was really going on here was a protest rally. You know, when we walked around here, it was kind of fun and whatever, and yeah, I know some of you didn't like it, but <laughs> practice your coping skills. Um, <laughs> It was fun, and sometimes, you know, we have the kids skip through with poems and whatever, and it's real cute and all that kind of stuff. But really, what was going on here was a protest rally. Jesus came in through the East Gate. And you say, well, why does that detail matter? Well, because Pilate, who was the king, essentially, was coming through the West Gate at the same time. Oh, you mean they were cheering for somebody other than the king? Have you watched the news lately? Right? Jesus told his disciples to go get the, not just the donkey, but the donkey and its colt. And some people think that's weird because they think that what happened was that he was riding on both. No, that's not what he was doing. He was emulating Pilate and his army because anyone important in an army had a steed, a magnificent steed, who would carry them into battle. But they also had a backup horse. So if something happened to their steed, they could get on the other. And here we have Jesus with his magnificent donkey. Bar family has donkeys. How magnificent are they really? On a scale of one to ten. They're cute, and I know you love them, Alice, but in terms of magnificent, not so much. And his backup, his backup horse was a donkey's colt. He probably couldn't even have sat on it without breaking it. And his, his parade was totally different than Pilate's because Pilate's parade gathered everybody under the sun because they were afraid if they weren't there that they would somehow be punished by the government. And if you've watched the news, you can see to the extreme level what being punished by your government can mean in some places of the world. Jesus' followers were there also at their own risk, but they were there because they chose to be. They wanted to be. They were excited to see. And what does it say? The prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Think about the contrast. Pilate coming through the West Gate, surrounded by people who were only there because... They knew if they weren't, they'd be punished. Riding a magnificent steed. And Jesus, coming into the east on a humble donkey, to palm fronds and cloaks on the ground. Hearing people who loved him say, Hosanna. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The difference is magnificent. It kind of puts you in mind. Do you remember? And I'm almost too young, too too young for this. But do y'all remember the commercial years ago, where the hippie girl takes her daisy and shoves it in the soldier's rifle? And I don't know what that was to symbolize. I just know that the difference between the two is kind of that dramatic. See, Palm Sunday can be handled in many ways because it's also Palm and Passion Sunday. Sometimes we focus on the passion. Today I've chosen to focus on the palms. But as we do, we need to remember why the palms were there. The palms were in fact a symbol of protest, protesting in a different way, protesting, yes, the government, but saying to them, our lives are different. Our lives are special. Our lives are claimed by Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet and Messiah, who is humble and peaceable and loves us to the very end. Thanks be to God. Let's sing now, you're both lamb and shepherd.
you please be seated? I want you to know that we have folks from MRD, MRDD, right? right. Who come and um, help fold and fill our bulletins every week. And they have never been so happy as to see all these inserts that we have here. <laughs> I'm not going to read them to you. Take them home and pay attention to them there. Um, there is some good stuff in there. Also, make note, please, on the back of your bulletin is this week's Holy Week schedule um, for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Um, the one other thing I do want to bring your attention to is that this Tuesday will be the first gathering of our Tea Time Book Club. They are going to, they have hopefully been reading and are going to take a look at The Red Tent, which is a wonderful biblical historical fiction book. Um, if you want to get grab a book and read some of it and come, there are books from the library that are down in the church office that you can sign out and um, read. So please come to that on Tuesday afternoon. Um, I think that's the announcements for now. Um, it is important to note that at this moment, Louise Bizzari is in the ER. Uh, she fell, and uh, this, this morning, right, fell? She actually fell Thursday. Oh, she fell Thursday, all right. Um, anyway, Louise is in the ER, so we need to be praying for her. They're still trying to figure out exactly what's happening with her. So please pray for Louise and um, for Chuck and Marlene. Are there other joys or concerns we have this day? I would um, also offer prayers of thanksgiving. I think everyone survived prom. Um, and I say that not entirely joking, um, <laughs> but they looked good, had a good time, and everybody, I think, is home safe now. Yes. Travel mercies for the Boy Scouts. If you showed up in the back today and noticed the van was gone, it's not because somebody stole it. <laughs> the Boy Scouts have taken the van. They're in... Southern Indiana, yeah. camping in a cave. And Woody came in and get, to get the van keys on Friday. I've never seen a man so more excited in all my life. And I thought, you're going to stay in a cave. What is wrong with you? <laughs> but uh, we've, got a, we've got a really fantastic group of Boy Scouts right now. And um, they have fantastic leaders. So, yes, we wish them well. Anything else today? Yes. Connie West Reed had, yeah, has not been West Reed or Reed West. West Reed um, has not been feeling real well. She had some surgery and whatever. She was, however, at the Bunny Bash yesterday celebrating. My friend, the bunny, called me and said that she got a picture with Connie, so there we go. Um, anything else today? That bunny bash was a great event. The bunny bash was fun. Lots of kids attended. Good attendance, cute kids, beautiful bunnies. There were four bunnies. Yeah. Friends, let us come together in prayer before our holy God. Let us pray. Lord of Palm and Passion, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the glory with which you shone on this day so many years ago. We pray that we might share in those first disciples' excitement at the very sight of you. 
May our hearts be open to love you, our ears be open to hear you, our arms be open to receive you. Lord, we pray your loving presence be with us through this week where we will need courage. Lord God, we pray this day healing for Louise and blessings on Chuck and Marlene. We ask your presence with Connie, that she might be full and well again. We thank you for the children and youth of this community. For those who went to prom and had such a good time. For the Boy Scouts who camp and enjoy the love of nature that you have given them. And for the children who enjoyed bunnies and eggs and signs of your new life. Lord, we pray now in your name, even as you taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let our hosannas to the one who brings liberation take form in our tithes and offerings. Our morning offering will be received. That baby loves John Kirkland, in case you're wondering what's going on back there. <laughs> Let us pray. God of all good gifts, we thank you for showing us how to care for each other. Give us grateful hearts, O oh God, in the name of the one who came to draw all people to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And let us stand and sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna, hymn number eight.
nine. Blessed ones, as you go from here, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.